Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Shakshur Film Festival events once again. Uh, today, we are here with a very special guest, a young and talented filmmaker. Jan Weinar is with us today. Uh, hello, Jan. Welcome to our Q&A session. Hello. It's nice. Nice to be here, at least virtually. Yeah, at least virtually. Um, how are things going in Prague and Czech Republic right now? Uh, are you comfortable? Uh, is it a good time for you to uh, make your new movies, write your new movies? <clears throat> Actually, it is, even though it's unpleasant for many people here, like anywhere in the world. Uh, I know I need some kind of pressure as a, you know, as a writer. <laughs> uh, so uh, something. Uh, uh, in like important and uh, impactful needs to happen to to force me to actually close yeah. at my place and write. So now it's it's the best time for writers, I think. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. I totally agree. Um, Not so much for. <laughs> uh, before asking you uh, my questions and before starting a Q and A session, I would like to introduce you to our weavers, uh, if you let me. Uh, Jan Weinar is from Czech Republic. Uh, he's a Prague-born filmmaker. Uh, he was born in 1987 uh, in Prague. Uh, he has made some several short films uh, in his student years. Uh, and right now he is making commercials. And his latest short, his magnificent latest short, Figurant, uh, was selected to many film festivals all around the world, including uh, the prestigious festival South by Southwest. Uh, am I wrong, Jan? Uh, no, no, you're, you're okay. correct. Okay, uh, and was also and the figure was also this year's festival's opening film, and was the champion award-winning film of the last year's festival. Uh, we will talk uh, about Figurant mostly uh, with Jan today, uh, but also I have questions for him about his uh, filmmaking perspective and cinema career. So, if you're ready, uh, I want to ask you my first question. I'm ready. Okay, <laughs> great. Here we go. Uh, this is a typical first question, actually, uh, about Figurant. Um, how did you come up with the idea of making a Figurant? What motivated you to tell us this uh, magnificent story, Jan? Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if it's uh, you know one situation or one you know one, one source of inspiration, but I think uh, the. Original idea came up from my feature script I wrote uh, before, and um, the script was based on my on my experience uh, while I was still a, a student of a film school. My experience as a film extra, because I've been a couple of times on uh, on movies, mostly uh, foreign films, mostly mm -hmm. U.S. you know blockbuster movies, which were partly shot in, in uh, Czech Republic and. Uh, uh, I've been there and I've been one of many people, many, I mean, like, it was like 400, 500 people there. So uh, I never saw such a big, uh, uh, you know, such a big group on, uh, or on a Czech film. So, uh, and uh, the film I was uh, an extra on, it was, it was uh, a film about um, World War Two. So uh -huh. uh, there, the there was also an experience film, yeah. of like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And I wrote a feature script based on this experience, like vaguely based on this experience set to World War One, but it was like a social comedy, more in the in the vein of Robert Altman's, you know, ensemble okay. movies like Nashville or Shortcuts, because I love these movies, it's like social comedies. And uh, so I wrote something like this from the perspective of people who are not like part of the creative process of the film, and most of the time they don't know what's what is happening right now and most of them they never been on the film set before and they don't know how the film process looks like and because it, it, it's gonna be a, a quite expensive film and i don't think i'm gonna shoot it you know uh, in the near future i needed to which i didn't know back then i, I needed to make uh, a test like a test for this film to convince mm -hmm. you know the potential partners to to finance this film and um, instead of taking one scene from the from the script I, I decided to write my own you know just something that will work also as a short film so it will have a because still you need finance even this test so you know write it as a short film 
uh, looked like a good idea. But very early on uh, during the writing process, the, the, the tone of the film and the mood, it, it uh, took totally different path. So I think uh, right now when Figurant is finished, it, there is nothing, you know, common with these two things. Maybe, maybe the, the, the motive of, or the topic of the individual, you know, uh, being dragged uh, in a strange environment. He's the first time here, uh, but uh, it's a totally different film that I wanted to do. So I'm not, uh, I'm not, you know, showing it as a reference for the future feature film. Yeah because it, it's, it's a different thing. So it's a kind of a practice. So that, for that's you. the origin of, uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and uh, also, uh, I think, uh, I, because, you know, the, the, the early draft of Figurant was more like based on the film set, you know, like mm -hmm. it was about an extra coming for her here the first time. There was a, some kind of dream logic, even in this version, but, uh, in next drafts, I, I decided to make it more universal, more abstract. You know, not not to set it uh, clearly on a on a film set uh, because I think the the experience the the main character is going through is uh, is quite universal, and you can have it, it's, you know, mostly everywhere in every envir environment in yeah. in a company or everywhere you're coming uh, for the first time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I totally. Agree. Sorry, I was too long. To be right now. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Um, I totally agree. And uh, well, as narrative-wise, Figurant is not an easy film. I mean, it's not an easy film to understand. Uh, I really like the film, but um, we follow uh, the story of an unnamed man uh, entering into an unknown place in an in industrial area. Um, as the audience, we don't know uh, the main characters, the protagonist's backstory. We don't know his motivation or even uh, don't have any specific information uh, where the story takes place. Um, mm, yeah, so yeah. frankly, I really want to ask you that, uh, why did you choose uh, such an ambiguous way to tell your story? Uh, I mean, it's, it's mm. obvious that it takes place in a uh, film studio or uh, s somewhere like that. But uh, why did you s choose an ambiguous way, uh, more a closed mm. uh, way to tell your story? Because uh, I think the, uh, you know, the, the point of the film is more in like emotional level than, you know, story wise, you know, mm -hmm. there is no big twist at the end. It's, it's more like the, the goal was to, uh, to, you know, transfer this emotion to the audience. And uh, so the, I decided that the, the, the keyword, you know, that is, that, you know, somehow describes the the atmosphere during the whole film is like uncertainty that yeah. the main character should be uncertain most of the time. And uh, he's like a newcomer. And, you know, originally there was a prologue. I, I wrote the prologue where, you know, we learned that he's a, he's a more or less a homeless guy, you uh -huh. know, who needs some daily wage. Uh, and he, uh, he reads some kind of, um, how is it? I miss the word like the, you know, some kind of paper on a lamp where they, you know, you know, when he reads that they are hiring people for this work and some kind of flyer and everyone. Knows, okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some kind of flyer and everyone knows each other, but he's the, he's the only one, you know, the, the new one. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and since then he, he's, you know, willing to, 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 uh, to do what they will tell him to do only to, to get that money. And, you know, each time he, he thinks he understands what's going on. There is something new coming in the process and he, he's lost again. So it was more um, about, you know, uh, it was like non-narrative film in a way, you know, more about the emotion and this experience, more abstract. And because of that, I need to make everything else unclear. So uh, not to make a film about uh, actual film set, but about... Uh, film set from perspective of somebody else who never been on a film set and uh, maybe it's not a film set, maybe they're doing something uh, illegal there, you know, build this like mysterious uh, surreal uh, atmosphere. That, that was the goal, the ultimate goal, because it was much closer to the final emotion than uh, the first version, which was much more, uh, let's say, realistic. 
Yeah, I have to say that uh, I really like your perspective, the ambiguous way, I mean, like the uncertainty, because uh, when I first saw the movie, I tried to understand the the place, I tried to uh, understand the motives of the main character, but then I uh, started to think about uh, not to understand it, but to feel it uh, more than understanding it. So it's a, I mean, uh, I can, I have to say that I really liked your film and it's a perfect way to tell your story. Uh, so thank you for such a great film. You're making a great film, uh, Jan, I have to say that. You know, thank you for being my uh, perfect audience because that's what I wanted to do actually. And I, I think I wrote this into my uh, intention note because when we were applying for film funds, uh, this was most more or less the sentence I wrote there. To, oh, to you okay. know, to not understand, to feel it, because feel it, yeah. there's of course some interpretation, but it's it's based on on feelings. So when somebody told me, I'm not sure if I got it, I said, and how do you feel about it at the end? Because that's you know, that's Maybe. the answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, you are work. You worked with a worldwide well-known actor, Danny Levan, in your movie. Uh, uh, we especially know him from Leo Carax movies. Uh, how did you reach him and uh, how did you convince him to play in your short film? Uh, because he's a very well-known and very talented actor. And how was your experience working with him, such a great uh, actor? Yeah. Uh, it's more, more questions in one, so I will go through yeah, it. Sure, I mean, sure. uh, originally, I, I uh, of course, I wasn't imagining that he is going to really play in my own. Uh, I um, when I was thinking about the main protagonist, I first first I got was his face, you know, and like then he was, you know, when I was thinking about him, I, I think I mm -hmm. saw him by that time in three films, three or four. But uh, so I never seen, I mean, all the Carax films, just Holy Motors and um, and Lovers the, on the Bridge. How is it called? The, uh, the Lovers on the, the Bridge. Uh, no, no, no. The second no. one. It's uh, no, no, no. It's it's a. Uh, Something with the blood, you know, in the in the in the title. Okay, but, let me, uh, yeah, let me take a look. I think it was his first movie. Let me take yeah. a look. Yeah, but uh, Holy Motors was this this film I, I saw a couple of times because I really like Holy Motors. So uh, I was thinking I need the face like this, and uh, I during the during the co-production forum when we were pitching the the film, uh, I mentioned his name. And uh, as a reference, but the thing is that you cannot mention Danny Lavon as a reference because there is nobody else with a face like this and with the talents like this, you know, to perform physically, which was the key. I need somebody who will be comfortable with playing just with his body, you know, who will be speechless and he's not going to be too, like, uh, theatrical, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, somebody told me, uh, you know, because we had one-to-one -one meetings with the co-producers and, and one of the producers told me, well, we've actually worked with him before and it's not that, you know, unrealistic because he, he likes to work with young people and with students and uh, uh, or he only cares about the script and about the character. He, he likes the script and, of course, if he has time, uh, he's willing to do that. So... Then and we agreed with this producer to work together, not just because of Denny, because you know of many other reasons, but one of the reasons was also this. And uh, then uh, they contacted him, uh, his agent, because they already worked with him. And, and it took, I think, a year or something to arrange the arrange the um, schedules uh, with him. But uh, he replied quite early that he likes it and he's gonna do that. But of course, I didn't believe it till you know the day we met and said that something gonna happen, you know, and he's not gonna go. But uh, uh, since he was there, uh, he was great. I think we, we had uh, one call before, and, and um, he he got everything from the script. So when when I discussed with him about you know my intention, he already knew. And uh, uh, since since the day one, he was like offering lots of. Lots of approaches, and uh, but he was like a like a puppet, you know, in the best possible way that you can you can actually uh, propose new and no new and new uh, things, and he's gonna do everything, you know, play with it. Uh, he's not that kind of actor who's like, wait a minute, we we discussed, you know, we will do just this, and this is you know beyond the character. No, he's you know 
if there is a at least a loose connection, he's willing to do everything you want because he likes to he likes to play. <laughs> so uh, it was great. I mean, the the collaboration was was perfect. Uh, well, yeah, uh, uh, but I, I think I, I cannot you would cast any else. Yeah, great. Uh, by the way, the film of the film, the film of the uh, the name of the film, uh, I think you remember. Try to remember is Muva Sang. Uh, it's kind of bad blood. Is it true? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. okay. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about the financing process of your movie because uh, I want to learn about your uh, how did you finance the figurant and how did you. Uh, manage to uh, put the budget together in your film because it's not, I think, uh, same here in Turkey. But I want to see the differences between uh, Europe, Czech Republic, and Turkey. So, can yeah, you please tell us about? Uh, that? I think my producers would probably tell you more. Uh, but oh, yeah. uh, you know, just basically, we we knew that we cannot finance it from the Czech Film Fund, mm -hmm. uh, and we are actually very lucky that. Uh, I don't know, like for last three years, uh, Czech Film Fund is also supporting uh, short films. Uh, you know, they now you know see short films as a regular form, not just as a student film, but you know, a regular format. You know, mm -hmm. for even for professional filmmakers and older, much older filmmakers. You know, it's like with novels and short stories, it's the same thing. Uh, so they started supporting it and we applied for that and was the you know the first thing we need to have uh, uh you know receive the fund that we need to also receive the french fund because mm -hmm. we wouldn't make it just for the check check money so you were in the situation like i i have it but i have nothing <laughs> i have nothing you know <laughs> you need two things and uh we were lucky to to get even the french support so so the the most of the budget was you know combination of czech and french money mm -hmm. there was this thing that uh the project was originally czech and according to the rules of czech film fund you need to have a majority but we could apply for much more money in france so I mean, uh, honestly, the majority was on the French side, but we need to <laughs> tell the Czech part that, you know, we need to find somebody else to, to you know, to show it that it's it's a Czech majority. So we, we apply for some another like historical um, organizations, you know, uh -huh. dealing with World War One and reenactment uh, groups and stuff like that. Uh, who didn't give us money, but they gave us uh, costumes or uh they props, borrowed us the some location. kind of props or accessories props, exactly. yeah. yeah yeah so we put this together and uh i think uh, you know just just for the uh, you know to speak about the french part of the finan uh, financing process it's it's great because they have like six or seven applies for just for short film per year so the french uh industry is the biggest uh I think it's the biggest it. uh, like industry in Europe, so mm -hmm. so it totally makes sense to uh, to do the film with them. So I think thanks to the French side, we actually were allowed to 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 make the film. Yeah. Let's talk about you. Uh, besides the figurant, uh, I know that I read your biography, short biography, and uh, you wrote that your first memory is watching the Star Wars. Film. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, <laughs> I know that you like uh, both mainstream films and art house films. And uh, how was your relationship with the movies? And what kind of movies do you want to make in the future? Hmm. Yeah, uh, it's very hard to answer. Actually, I'm still thinking <laughs> about this question, and I, uh, every time I'm thinking about it, I find different answer. But uh, answer. Yeah. right now, how 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 are you feeling right now? I mean. I mean, you know, I mean, the, the what connects the uh, for me as a viewer, what connects the mm -hmm. art films with uh, like you know commercial movies, yeah, studio movies, is a, a strong atmosphere. That's, I think mo uh, the most important aspect for me as the viewer, and maybe the ultimate goal as a director, also mm -hmm. a creator, a writer, you know, whatever in my work, uh, because the if, it doesn't have i'm not so much into the story even though i love great stories and great tragedies great comedies but i'm you know you know the i think probably my top 10 top 20 i don't know would be mostly um 
made from films with a strong uh, strong uh, atmosphere uh, because that's something that can transfer you somewhere else and uh, something that stays with you even when the film is so over you know and uh, i don't know it might be it might be a uh, film by Wong Kar Wai uh, it might be also um, you know George Lucas Star Wars yeah. <laughs> one it you know uh, this thing is this uh, Aspect is the. Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's it's an abstract answer. I don't. I know that. But uh, when I'm, you know, when I should tell you how, which films I would like to do in the future, uh, I like to 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 play with new genres. You know, to do mm -hmm. something I didn't try before. But this aspect is uh, is uh, something I uh, I'm searching uh, again. You know, every time I I'm thinking about something. Yeah, I'm trying to find that. Uh, are you uh, working on a uh, new project right now, uh, a feature film, a short film? Yes, uh, I'm actually I'm writing, uh, working on both uh, right both. now uh, at the same moment, which is uh, not working <laughs> at all <laughs> because I'm switching from one to another. Yeah, it must be uh, hard to work on both projects uh, and I'm concentrate. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. They, they have like. Especially when they have like similar deadlines, or I mean, my personal deadlines. You know, when I said to, I need to switch. It doesn't work like that. I need to work at least months on something and then switch on the on the other thing. But uh, I'm working on another short, uh, or at least this time it's gonna be almost like a, a medium length film. You know, uh -huh. a longer short. Uh, again, with my French producers, and I, I wrote uh, the first version of a script quite recently, so I need to finish it till till the end of the year and then i work on the check uh check film uh like a feature debut uh but i'm in the very again in the very early stage of writing because the thing is that i'm constantly looking for something you know with feature that could be done easily and i always end up with something that is not that uh <laughs> cheap actually it's quite expensive yeah. all, all the time so i'm still trying to find something else that's gonna be you know that, that you can make in 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 one room or one apartment but at the same time as a viewer you will be entertained for the whole time and it's not gonna die in the middle because uh, uh, as a viewer i have most of the time when i see a film like that you know conceptual films set to one place because of the budget and stuff like that it works for the first 40 minutes but then you know uh, it's not that frequent that you see a film that works uh, for the whole time for 90 plus minutes and it's set to just one location. It's, it's hard to write something like that. Um, you're also shooting commercial films, and I think in Prague. Um, does it affect you? Uh, does it affect your cinema? Uh, in a, I mean, in a film. Uh, does it affect your film grammar or uh, film language? Yeah, yeah. Uh, shooting commercials uh, and shooting at the same time uh, short films and. Uh, try to work on your uh, long feature films? I mean, it, it, it probably uh, sounds or reads, in my biography, it reads much bigger than it is actually because I'm not doing that quite, you know, I'm not a frequent uh, commercial director. Commercial. Uh, uh, and uh, most of the commercials I did were for uh, non-profit companies. So there was no, actually, no budget. It was more for. I mean, one of it for for uh, art house cinema in Prague. Uh, other one was for a non-profit uh, company. You know, for handicapped children. So I, I uh, the 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 advantage of it was that there was no agency in the middle, mm -hmm. which usually is. You know, when you're doing a commercial, so I could create the idea myself you know bring something and uh, try something if it's not gonna be too expensive try something which i wouldn't try uh in a short film because still there's some money for it and in case of short film you need to apply and it's an uncertain you know uh result so uh so uh i'm not doing even though i'm not doing many commercials uh it's always an uh, opportunity to to Try some approach that I might eventually use in in a shorter feature after that. Um, so maybe in this way it affects my my work. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
this year you were one of the jury members of Uşak Short Film Festival and uh, you yeah. watched a lot of Turkish shorts and shorts from all around the world. How was your experience there? Did you like the films? How did you find uh, to be a jury member? Yeah, I was looking forward to it, even though I, I knew it's going to be a lot of films to watch. Yeah. Uh, I never seen so much shorts in in um, <laughs> in a short amount of time, and uh, even at the festivals, uh, you know, I've been like physically, uh, yeah, yeah, attend. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm getting depressed very early because I see so many shorts, and I'm like, you know, it's so hard to even find the audience, you know, in this sea of of movies. But this. And see it from the you know opposite side and uh, think you know about you know that there are in events of such yeah, in, in it, for a short period of time we, we lost so, the connection so uh, uh, can you repeat again uh, we lost I'm, the connection I'm just trying to see my thoughts about it yeah you know uh, interesting was that yeah do you hear me yeah? because I, I see yeah I hear you now but we lost connection for a brief period of time so I hope it works so. yeah okay. uh, yeah no just thinking about you know many questions uh, in this but um, because I, I think I saw about 80 80 shorts at least mm -hmm. so uh, first thing good to me is that most um, much more than I would say where uh, where about like 20 or 25 minutes because that's the format everyone tells you that there is a much uh, you know there is a less chance mm -hmm. to be selected with a longer short, short because short. you know the programmer needs to put out two two shorts so i think i would say even you know about that just my uh, feeling maybe it wasn't like that but i think most of the shorts were about about 20 minutes so that was uh, actually for my future film it was a good thing to learn um and the other thing was that i saw a quite a, a a big amount of good movies there because i thought that i mean among 50 films you were like three or four but actually it was like 15 16 it was like well the conversation about uh, is this film good or not let's just pick the good ones because you know the standard was high even you know among the 50 more or less so you need to discuss other uh, and that i think called me down as a as a filmmaker you know for with my future projects you know that your your film is not bad when it's mm -hmm. not selected it doesn't have to be like that it's just that it doesn't fit into that program yeah. that was a great experience you know, to, to to see that from the opposite side actually yeah it's great to hear i totally agree uh, i don't know if i was clear or not <laughs> yeah you were you were clear yeah thank you um our connection is a little bit uh, problematic so uh, if you're okay with it and if you don't have anything to add i would like to uh, end up our session uh, i really want to take you thank you uh, just joining up our q and q and a session it's, it was great to meet you, uh, even though it's uh, an online meeting. So thank you once again, Jan Maynard, yeah. uh, for attending to our q and session. No, thank you too. I'm, I'm really glad to be part of this for a second year now, even on the opposite yeah. side. It, it's a great experience, actually. I hope I'm going to visit the festival in person in the future. Yeah, years. maybe next year if things go well and uh, if we can... Uh, that would be amazing.